Hello there friends, this is Dota News, we are here to create the best Dota News channel ever, here's what we cover in today's episode. Valve bans for Overplus, Mira on ending his career, Quinn disrespects opponents, how the world's best carry prepares for games and much more. Without further ado, let's get straight to it. Well, let's kick things off with Celery, who shed some light on their ongoing rivalry with Team Liquid. According to him, their adversaries are constantly stealing their tactics. He points out that this isn't original and that Liquid hasn't really come up with anything on their own. Obviously, it's probably meant as a joke, but why not adapt strategies that work, especially against an opponent who consistently comes out on top? Personally, I think this is why matches between the Gladiators and Liquid are always so compelling and engaging. Speaking of Liquid, the team's mid laner opened up about dealing with haters. In an interview, Nisha was asked about how frequently do they receive death threats. He shared that on a personal level it doesn't happen much to him, but the team, they get it a lot. And let me tell you guys, it's pretty chilling to hear. It seems like these threats are mostly coming from batters who watched their cash go down to drain. Now, while your average batter might not be all that menacing, the real worry kicks in when you think about someone truly dangerous behind these threats. It paints a stark picture, we could be on the brink of losing one of the sports world's giants, and honestly, that's terrifying. Another famous mid laner, Malrin, shared insights from the team's dynamics, especially regarding ATF. Malrin reveals that ATF never engages in fist bumps, considering them superfluous and unnecessary. On the other hand, Malrin is determined to achieve his goal and make MR fist bump after matches. The player also mentioned that their whole gameplay has some shortcomings, they are constantly striving to improve and play stronger. This effort is reflected in their results against top teams and in their tournament performance. For instance, they recently advanced to the main stage of the BB Dacha. And since we're talking about the mid laners, another one from the EEU region, Kiyotaka, shared some tips on how to boost your MMR effortlessly. According to him, the key is to face off against players like Koikwa or Arteezy. Yeah, like at 4k MMR we can get them. But he obviously was talking about high ranks. This revelation came during one of the Kiyotaka's streams, where he smoothly outplayed both of them. He even jokingly referred to Koikwa as his personal MMR donor. But anyways guys, it's all in good fun, of course, and Kiyotaka's comments adds a playful touch of troll that's hard to take seriously, but if all the banter takes this route, I worry the game might lose some of its excitement. Meanwhile, another trash talker is truly living up to the reputation at the BB Dacha. Quinn decided to entertain the crowd with his gestures during the match against VP. Just take a look at him in action. Я думаю, что он, вероятно, лучший мидер прямо сейчас. А кто сомневается? Ну, посмотри на него. А когда они лучшие? Guys, is this okay or not? I'm a little confused, to be honest. But moreover, Quinn didn't stop there in his efforts to belittle his opponents. During a pause due to packet loss, Quinn suggested they continue playing, remarking that he didn't want to waste his life on such nonsense. This shows an even greater disrespect for his opponent, especially at a tournament like BB Dacha. Friends, what do we think of Quinn? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Anyways guys, the Chinese New Year is here, and in anticipation of the Lunar New Year, Valve has released a patch fixing a few bugs, they also introduced a new treasure. However, the skins included might not be the most impressive, in my opinion. I've only taken a liking to the Phantom Assassin skin with Monkey King. Feel free to share in the comments which skins you like the most, I'd be happy to read your favorites. The most significant reward in the treasure, though, is the skin for Ancient. This is the first time ever Valve has added decorations for the throne, and it looked quite special spectacular in-game. Just look at this beauty! The dragon flies through and it's… wow, cool, really cool. Besides that, gifts from our favorite game don't end there. Gabe has decided to ban players again, this time Overplus users have been caught in the sweep. For those of you who are unfamiliar with cheats, Overplus provides an advantage in drafts and skin changes, showing strong heroes of opponents and the win rate of players in the lobby. In my opinion, this offers a significant advantage, especially in immortal drafts, where a player can select strong characters knowing their win rates in advance. Fishman also mentioned that the ban wave affected pro players who compete in the tier 2 level. The banned players, which you might recognize, are displayed on your screen with a ban tag. As you can see, some of them were previously banned for match fixing, for example Lefitan and Limitless. Should we be sad about these players, guys? I mean, they were banned for match fixing before and now they are so prohibited from playing in matchmaking, although they can make new accounts and play again. 
On a less positive note anyways, former OG player Taiga has announced his retirement from professional play. Previously, there were rumors that he might have been involved in match fixing due to getting hooked and batting. Moving forward, Taiga plans to stream Dota 2 on Twitch and aims to reach the 12k MMR mark. Interestingly, he will also be playing in the carry role, although frankly his performance on position 1 has not been the best. By the way guys, if you're interested in a deeper dive into Taiga's controversial journey and want to know his dark story, feel free to leave a comment with a suggestion and we will definitely cover that story if we will get enough comments. In another update from the esports world, a renowned position 4 player shared his thoughts on what he would do if he decided to retire. According to Team Spirit's Mira, he would try to find a substitute for Dota, but he admits that he would fall into a very serious and deep depression. It's understandably sad to consider ending a career after achieving so much, but such a decision is likely inevitable at some point. We honestly hope that Mira won't be concluding his career anytime soon and that he will continue to delight us with his incredibly skillful gameplay. We wish him and Team Spirit all the best in their future endeavors. And by the way, speaking of Mira, he also shared an intriguing photo of how Yetero prepares for matches. While everyone else is watching replays and studying strategies, the world's best carry just lies on bad, winning everyone he can. Frankly, if all it takes to become a two-time TI champion is to just lie down and look at your phone constantly, then I guess I'm somewhat of a Yetero myself. In other news, another formidable carry has expressed a desire to engage into a fist fight, and unsurprisingly, it's going to be a 23 Savage vs. Gabi. It's well known that their conflict has been brewing for quite some time, and its resolution seems uncertain, suggesting that the ring might be where we finally find out who's in the right. Interestingly, this sets up the fourth match for the Dota 2 UFC event we discussed in a previous video. Be sure to check it out if you haven't already. While players are ready to fight each other, Saberlight battles against nature, or himself. While on vacation at the resort, he injured his leg. He posted a video on his Twitter asking not to inform Shopify Rebellion about it, which prohibited him from breaking or injuring anything. Don't worry, Saberlight, we won't rat you out. And now, friends, let's move on to the best matches of BB Dacha. And the first match will be the showdown between Extreme Gaming and OG. On the first map, OG decided to surprise us with an offlane anti-mage against Medusa. Their aim, obviously, was to shut down Ame, not allowing him to farm comfortably in the lane. However, this strategy caused significant damage to their own void, but in my opinion, Medusa makes a much tougher comeback. Yet, Extreme Gaming moves much better across the map and anticipates opponents' movements. Thanks to this, they managed to gain a significant lead in terms of net worth and secured many satisfying frags on OG's cores. Meanwhile, Ame gradually climbs to the top in terms of net worth. So many items at this point. He is sitting on only 12,000 net worth. Whisper goes in bottom lane here. They're gonna force the BKB out from Mars immediately. And there's the arena catches too. Yuragi, he's gotta find a curl target, but DY just pulverizes him instead. This whole faceless void BKB completely wasted. As I don't even think he's get. is he even gonna get out of here? He's gonna try. Oh, it's not. not what a spear from the Mars. And they're hunting for more. Whisper in trouble now. Gets caught from a lasso. Nice two hero soul bind. Whisper trying to just turn this one around. Salvage this fight. But he just flicks right into a stun. BZM with a pulverize doing some work. But Jin Q is still alive. And he will finally fall. But it's gonna be four for one, basically. Extreme Gaming doesn't leave OG any chance on the first map. Every fight goes in their favor, and with the second Aegis, the Chinese team moves in to finish off their opponents. Just look at Sap role-playing here, a war photographer just taking pictures and not doing anything, not interfering with the fight. And then he just tilts and types GG after his stolen black hole. Because he got the BKB off, the damage just wasn't sufficient. They have an amplified damage. This is your... This is it. This is all you've got here to try and win this game. Zinq on the backside pushed away yuragi going in but just getting absolutely controlled up a hex into an arena the spear ends up missing that's buying him probably the best case scenario you're gonna lose seb first jin q getting chased down by his anime illusion there's gonna be a mana void to find the kill an instant buyback as yuragi thinking of going back in they're gonna try and stay on top of ame xm gets caught by bzm onto the back side we are in the bird's eye view here so many fights happening but there it is xm deleting the faceless void you do not stand a chance against this guy. 
Ari trying to get BZM to safety. Jin Q will push him right back in. Onslaught canceled by XXS once again. There's the black hole yeah, just... instantly stolen from DY. He's waited all game for this moment as the GG. On the second map, OG continued to try to dictate the tempo. Extreme Gaming, of course, attempted to contain them. However, Dire had so much damage at their disposal that Sinku had to urge his teammates to retreat and avoid feeding, as he does on his Marcy. So... OG have no idea that this rotation is coming. They do see it, and the Watcher is going to scout them. They're thinking, like, maybe we can go in here, but Whisper trying to break the smoke. They do see DY on the front side. He gets the nice ward place. The Orchid comes out, but can he burst him? He's trying his best. It's not enough. XXX pops the BKB, and you've lost your Timber Saw. Just gets destroyed on the backside here by Ame and DY, and now BZM in trouble. Just getting walked down. Four staff number one, not enough to save him, and in comes Jin Q. He's got the damage. Time lapse does come through for the moment, but Yuragi's on the run. Can he survive? He's trying his best, but it's not. Not nearly enough. Ame with this BKB, Jin Q with the damage, and you leave all In the fight for the second Roshan, Ame and his team turned the game in their favor. It's astonishing how Slur can deal so much damage in a fight against Invoker and Timbersaw. The Chinese players managed to make up for their initial setback and now are evenly matched in terms of net worth, making it effortless to fight against Dar in open fields. And you can see Timber just can't enter the fights properly. He keeps getting Viper's ultimate ability. More Moreover, Weaver's build deals zero damage. By the way, BZM got caught in the same spot three times in one game. In my opinion, he should have realized by now that it's better to avoid that area. And here, Ame and his teammates just end the map, catching Weaver without buyback. It seems like Yuragi was mentally drained playing this game. He was erased just in one stun. As he gets a very nice stun onto two, the Weaver and the Io trying to get away. They're protected for the moment. Yuragi forced to pop that time lapse, but Ame's just Staying on top of the four staff will get him to safety. They actually managed to control the backside. A great bushwhack onto two as Whisper gonna go in, but the chase continues. Ame gets on top of the Weaver. He's gonna die. His buyback will be committed. And you've caught the Timber Saw as well. His buyback not available. XXX, a body just keeping them at bay as he's gonna turn around with his own BKB XM doing the work as well as the base will crumble. That is the coming. best case scenario here for Extreme Gaming. If they can get out, they've already managed to claim Mega Creeps. Jeez, on Viper. As he jumps in. He After this defeat, OG were on the brink of elimination. Their last hope was in a victory against Team Spirit. And obviously, you can imagine. And now we have a match between Team Spirit and OG, obviously. Yadaro faces off against those he doesn't consider strong. It's interesting to see if Seb's team can surprise their opponents, or if it's an easy walk for Spirit. And here, the first step towards victory has been taken. Seb outdrafted Team Spirit, giving his teammates their signature heroes and securing first blood. In my opinion, teams shouldn't let Whisper play Timber, as he has been dominating on that hero throughout his career and clearly knows what to do with it. And here, you can see that BZM also hit top form for the tournament. Just look at how he maneuvers Spirit around the Rosh pit. Yeah, this is happening. They scanned it. Yes, they did. He's getting really low. Yotaro might be just waiting to try to steal. He's going to pounce in at a perfect time. Okay, but Yoragi gets the Aegis to pounce back out. Yeah. Yotaro, he took the cheese. A beautiful rolling thunder on the several heroes along with Yotaro actually trying to right click Ari. He's going to reroute his entire attacking mechanism to the bottom. Looks like he's actually just going to run away as Maposhka will be taken out thanks to the Unleash. Yoragi wants to chase Yotaro. Yotaro's who's completely mana. out of mana. Nice block from BZM. Pops the cheese. Slowed down and brought down. But the game wasn't easy for Dire. Team Spirit's supports are making an enormous amount of impact for fights and not allowing Yuragi to play comfortably. Just take a look at how OG's carry struggles against two supports. You know guys, in the current meta, supports are incredibly strong. Previously, they used to fall apart in the mid-game just in a few hits. Now Lion has a built-in BKB, for example. To me, that seems too overpowered and needs fixing. Is the 18%. <laughs> He's the only one winning with the hero. Like, literally, Might have a fight oh, oh. here. Smoke. Yuragi Smoke in the front. Proc. Whisper. Initiation to start with the burst damage. Not enough to take out the Timber Saw, so Whisper's gonna be fine. Mirror, in the meantime, okay, is not invulnerable this time around. So just like that, it's a 5 versus 4. Does OG want to continue on? Flamethrower activated. Hex onto the Slardar. He gets two. destroyed as well. Does have this buyback. Is a grave on top of Laura, but you can see the shard applied to him by Yatoro. Not going to be enough. Double kill for Whisper. Well, can he get out? And Yatoro Bash. gets bashed up. Whisper is there. Run Continuing fishy, fishy. on. Gets silenced. BKB. Has to pop his BKB. Pounce away. Attempted TP. Ooh, bash. He bashed him. First hit from Ari. 
Very fortunate for OG fans, and just like that. And you know, guys, BZM was playing the game of his life, making zero mistakes. And it's as if Gaben himself controls the bashes. And you know, guys, luck favors the strong, and Spirit loses a crucial fight, after which OG significantly extends their lead. The game is moving into the ultra late phase, with cores fully slotted, and BZM continues to dominate on his Pangolier, rolling over dragons. After a lost fight, Yadaro don't have enough money for a buyback, and Team Spirit is forced to defend with four players. Had it been any other team, they wouldn't have stood a chance to defend against that. But it's Mira and Miposhka, and they give their opponents a hard time. Yuraki was just fuming because his supports just abandoned him and he had to hit the buyback button. It's really tough for Dyer to breach the high ground. Laurel constantly heals from the back, Miposhka deals a ton of damage, and Mira provides control. Here, Yadaro and Collapse are needed more to bait the opponents into themselves. The damage output will naturally follow from others. They did manage to get Mega Creeps, of course. In a fierce fight, OG was finally able to overcome Spirit. They're unbelievably happy, Sep and the crew. The illusions will get it. There we go. So one tier four oh, remains. Ari. Initiation from Yatar. There's the buyback from Collapse. They destroy Mira right at the start. No buyback for him. And now Yatoro trying to kite them a bit. Nice abyssal. And they actually kill off Laurel before he can get up any spells. He has his buyback intact though. As the damage is being applied to Collapse right now, Laurel buys back into the game, gets off the grave, but again, they're gonna initiate on top of the Dazzle, but it looks like Ari's the one to drop, but that's the, the dieback. dieback finally coming out on Laurel. They focus him down, and there's not much now that the that Team Spirit can do to delay this any longer. The buybacks come through for OG. Ancient is exposed. Double kill for BZM. Damn, doing trying it. to take out Slark. Yatoro gets dropped like he's hot. But to keep celebrating, they needed another win. And OG once again outdrafted their opponents. It's unclear what's happening with Team Spirit's draft in the recent games. Are they experimenting or do they sometimes just fail to pick a coherent set of heroes? Write your thoughts in the comments below because I don't really know. OG were dominating at the lanes with BZM not letting Laurel farm. As you can see guys, at the beginning of the maps there's real difference, noticeable difference between the team's mid laners. But in my opinion, Laurel really blossoms in the mid game where it's time to move with the team. And support can help turn things around in the lane too. Spirit find ways to come back into the game, catching opponents who stray too far to farm. Meanwhile, Yadaro is steadily increasing his net worth. You wouldn't really know from the net worth tab that Spirit's carry was heavily suppressed early in the game, while Yuragi had 5k gold at 10 minutes. Spirit have a very good ward behind enemy lines. Yes, indeed. Whisper just has to get this ult off. If they a lot can... of lockdown for Spirit. If a hook... Oh, oh hook connects on, Whisper. on the Whisper. Can he get up the Primal Split? He's Lotus orchid. is there to keep him alive. He's still silenced. He's tidal wave back and dies without using that ult. And now it's a 4 versus 5 as OG on the retreat. As you can see, the Demonic Purge breaks now on the BZM. In that dragon form, he's a golden They're boy. Chasing. Song. Mm. Oh, boy. Oh, God. Hitting on three OG members. Torrent's coming as well. You can be able to get the magic missile, focusing on the Dragon Knight first. There's the tidal wave They're again to bring everyone back. And just like that. It seemed like Team Spirit found the key to winning fights against OG. They just need to take down Brewmaster before he can use his ultimate, and they can deal with the other heroes later. They just can't feel the damage from Slark and DK, but Whisper can truly cause real problems. If OG's trio isn't taken down quickly, they can still win fights without Yuragi. Spirit secured the second Roshan and moved to attack Radiant's high ground. Spirit's teamfight is incredibly strong, with Konka providing a lot of control and Collapse able to devour a hero even through BKB. Yadaro dodges every Shadow Dance and Depth Shroud from Slark with his sleep. And compared to his teammates, Yuragi can't do much on this map. He seems to be there just to provide more control with his pounces. Here, OG's mid laner foolishly jumps into Team Spirit and dies. And without BZM, Sab's team didn't stand a chance of defending. He did respawn towards the end of the fight, took down Yadaro's Aegis and drove all the heroes away. But with the Ancient being one hit away from destruction, such defense was no longer feasible. In the end, they lost, and OG are eliminated from BB Dacha. 
Now let's summarize the outcomes. Following the group stage, Team Spirit, BB, Extreme Gaming, LGD, GG, Liquid, Falcons and Azure Ray have advanced to the main stage of the tournament. Overall, it's all as expected, but now the most exciting part awaits. Solo mid showdowns on Shadow Fiends for a spot in the upper bracket. Now let's talk about the best highlights. We will start with the fight for Roshan between Spirit and OG. That puts Troll on a yeah, timer. He's dumb enough oh. as it is. Is OG that trying is to go for Rosh? Spirit have an idea. This is happening. They scanned it. Yes, they did. He's getting really low. Yataro might be just waiting to try to steal. He's going to pounce in at a perfect time. Oh, okay, but Yorogi right, gets the Aegis to pounce back out. Yatoro, yeah. he took the cheese. A beautiful rolling thunder on the several heroes along with Yatoro actually trying to right click Ari. He's going to reroute his entire attacking mechanism to the bottom. Looks like he's actually just going to run away as Maposhka will be taken out thanks to the Unleash. Yoragi wants to chase Yotaro, who's completely mana. out of mana. Nice block from BZM, pops the cheese, slowed down, and brought down. So uses the cheese and then dies. A really good attempt from Team Spirit as Maposhka. What the hell? <laughs> Kill this man! <laughs> yeah, very difficult kill for Ari. Oh, just roinky doinky. Yeah, but now... Next up, Spirit's game against Azor Ray and two Mars Arenas. Looking for his target, doesn't manage to connect, and so BKB spent there as well. He's got to be careful, does have that refresher at the ready. Collapse, he goes in, gets the spear, managed to find the Slark, but Magnus yes. just gets destroyed. The Abyssal Blade doing work, and the lasso will catch FY Arena, comes out as well. But can you bring down Ori? That's the big one. It's going to be the Anti-Mage right on top of him. The Bash is doing way too much. The Disarm comes through from the Techies. Wait a minute, they turn around the power. Into the bushwhack as well, they get him. Yatoro so goes down. Marl in so much trouble as this Slark is so, so strong. The pounces continue. The spear to try and make some space, but can you get out of this fight? It's and once again, a moment from Spirit versus OG. The 18%. <laughs> He's the only one winning with the hero. Like, literally, Spirit. Might have a fight oh, here. Smoke. Smoke in the front. Proc. Whisper. Initiation to start with the burst damage. Not enough to take out the timber saw, so Whisper is going to be fine. Mirror in the meantime okay, is not hero. invulnerable this time around. So just like that, it's a five versus. Four is OG want to continue on. Flamethrower activated. Hex onto the Slard. Or he gets you. destroyed as well. Does have this buyback. Is a grave on top of Laura, but you can see the shard applied to him by Yatoro. Not going to be enough. Double kill for Whisper. Well, can he get out? And Yatoro Bash. gets bashed up. Whisper is there. Run continuing fishy, fishy. on. Gets silenced. BKB. Has to pop his BKB. Pounce away. Attempted Ooh, TP. Bash. He bashed him. First hit from Ari. Guys, that's all for today. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave your feedback in the comments below, because it's really important for me to improve by listening to you guys. Also, hit that subscribe button to follow the best of the two news channel. I'm not saying goodbye for a long time. See you soon.